The Big Ten semifinals continue with game number two. Northwestern to take on Wisconsin here in Washington, D.C. with the winner to face the Michigan Wolverines on this floor tomorrow for the tournament championship. Welcome back, friends. Jim Nance along with Grant Hill, Bill Raftery, Tracy Wolfson. We've got Northwestern in the semifinals for the first time ever for Wisconsin. Five out of six years now in this spot. What makes them go this year, the Badgers? Well, for the Badgers, their man is their big man, Ethan Happ. He does it all on the interior for Wisconsin. High energy, great skill, great touch inside. He has a motor, plays nonstop on both ends of the floor. He is their leader, their best player. Has to come up big against Northwestern. But when you think of Wisconsin, it's their senior leadership. Bronson Koenig, Nigel Hayes, as you said, Jim, they've been here before. Got to play big. Northwestern, one of the best stories of the year in college basketball. They're going to be in the tournament next week as well for the first time ever. This has been some journey this season for them. Uh, it's been phenomenal. Of course, now Scotty Lindsay is healthy at mono. Tough bout for him, but now big time, whether it's the long three. His ability in the lane is something special. They need his scoring. <laughs> and his punch. A dynamic scorer and really the leader of this team when it comes on the wing to finish it. And then you got McIntosh, their point, a little bit of everything, including tops in the Big Ten in assists this season. Time for a little AT&T fast analysis. Well, he's the leader, no question about it. Whether it's scoring from three or putting it on the deck, great field, draws attention. You back cut, he provides the lift. Great talent, great leader, an accomplished performer. And when you think of Wisconsin, you think of the swing offense. So disciplined, so consistent. They find their leading man, Ethan Happ. And when he gets the ball, he's able to go baseline with a little wrath shake and finish. <laughs> uh, yes. I've seen the highlights. It's true. Uh, I <laughs> the old film. Forget the tape. We got a good one, folks, coming up. Wisconsin Northwestern. The winner to take on Michigan. Big Ten Tournament continues on CBS. CBS Sports coverage of the Big Ten Tournament is sponsored by Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And by Subway Restaurants. And the fans here in the D.C. area having a good time with the conference tournament. Big Ten tournament here for the first time ever. Tracy has some uh, breaking news with the Badgers. Over to you, Tracy. That's right. Wisconsin will be playing with heavy hearts today because sophomore Khalil Iverson has returned home to Ohio because of a death in his family, and he will not be back for the tournament. Iverson is a versatile defender. He provides depth off of the bench, so staying out of foul trouble will be key for Wisconsin today, Jim. Yeah, that's uh, going to be something that will certainly impact their substitution strategy. Gives them about 14 minutes a game, does Iverson. And there's Chris Collins. Fourth year, this historic season, it's all come together as he's built this program now to places a place it's never been before. Here's his first five with McIntosh, Lindsey, Law, Lumpkin, a senior, and Parton at 6'8". Good rebounder. Scored the winning basket in that uh, game against Michigan a couple of weeks ago that had him storm in the court at Welsh Ryan. Greg Gard is the head coach at Wisconsin, took over in December a year ago. He was the coach in this uh, Big Ten tournament last season and ended up leading the Badgers to the Sweet 16, his first five. There are four seniors. That's something that's a rare sight these days in college basketball, uh, particularly at in a power conference, see a team that's a 10 CAA tournament team and have four seniors in the lineup. And that's why I think they're so tough to play against for that reason. And the officials, Terry Weimer, Terry Oglesby, Larry Scarato. On the call here as we get set to find out Michigan's opponent tomorrow for the Big Ten title. Half able to control it. Back Jim to Bronson Koenig. Yes, sir. And Grant Hill, a little Northwestern. And Northwestern's defense, very good, very underrated, so connected defensively, expecting the double team half every time he touches the ball in the post. They nice. doubled up Hayes there for a moment. Koenig with a three. 
Wide of the mark, rebound, last touch by Hayes. Now you love looks like that for your premier shooter. And I thought in their game they played earlier this season, Northwestern just confused half, gave him so many different looks, trapped him from all over. The shooters have to knock down that shot to keep the defense honest. Uh, great point, too. They really doubled him from different spots, mostly behind. Sanjay Lumpkin, and so better tap it out was Vito. Vito Brown, who forced the steal. And your thoughts on Happ are so well grounded. He's sort of focal point of the offense, Grant. Hayes, short with the shot. Well defended by Lumpkin. Looked like it slipped out of his hands. Lindsay gives it up to Parton. Taken on Hattie. Tap, no. Lumpkin tries to save it and does underneath the hoop. And a travel call on Derek Parton. Well, you get opportunities like that. It's not going to be easy to score against either one of these teams. Without a doubt, Parton, you've seen him just improve and get better. Usually makes those little mm -hmm. shots around the basket. Came up a little short on that one. I've never, I haven't seen a team in the Big Ten as connected defensively. They trust, they help each other, multiple efforts, and they're going to need to do that here against Wisconsin. It's half. Now not a pass. good look. Off the leg of Lindsay, never change of possession. They're going to half foul, I think. Well, you love your 6'10 guy getting a foul on the ground. If that was him, now they go the other way. I'm not sure. Call on Lumpkin. On Lumpkin. Yeah. Greg Gard, such a loyal guy with Bo Ryan, takes over, gets the job, runs a lot of the swing, but gives him a little more freedom, I think. Hayes, turn around, jump shot. Two bad misses early by Hayes. Lindsay. Nice check out. Well, they're so well coached, both clubs getting back. You're not going to see a lot of easy baskets. Koenig, there's the first hoop for the game. And, and that's important for Wisconsin. Koenig only had two points in their first matchup. Had a little strained calf early on, but he needs to come out and be aggressive for the Badgers. McIntosh, floater, back of the rim. He just stays aggressive. He does. He's <laughs> great in that lane, though. Nice little floater jump. But how about the check out? The ball hit the ground. Everybody sealed off. Hold on McIntosh, maybe on the run there on the baseline. Exactly. It doesn't take much, that little quick little drag screen. Step back. Uh, Koenig, just amazing this kid's career. Tough shot. It's yeah. amazing how many of these young kids shoot the step back. Yeah, they do. Did you have it? I didn't shoot unless I was in the paint. I didn't shoot unless I was in the paint. He had a lot of that right there, though. I know that. Koenig from three. Well, you can see his confidence soaring. Lindsay. And Northwestern, three minutes now without putting up a point. Missing their first five from the field. Great footwork here. Joe Walter from the corner. Off the floor with his pardon. Quick up ahead, McIntosh. Lindsay. And we're half. He can make that little floater. Oh boy, you're not going to get much off your half court offense. It's going to have to rely on talent. Our guys are going to have to make plays too well coached. Get it to half. Look at where they're looking to sniff. On the dribble, great rotation defensively. Vito you know, Brown unable to hit from three. And he can make that shot. He has to hit that shot today for Wisconsin. He has been struggling with it, though. McIntosh. Yeah. Yeah. 
Northwestern over four minutes now. Nothing easy. A great challenge. Northwestern had that late game last night. Quick turnaround for these Wildcats. 0 for 7 from the field as a team. And they have shot so well these first two games. Mm -hmm. Knocking out Rutgers and Maryland. Nice spin out. Nigel Hayes. Big time. Boy, he is versatile, isn't he? Yeah, he's very versatile. Up, slip in there in the post. McIntosh, finally. He is a gamer. Always like the wing shot. Yeah, got it. Three. Can make that. Yep. He's got five. Boy, at this rate, you can order dinner now, Jim. No, oh, it's moving along. Yeah. Isn't it? Goodness, no stoppage. Lumpkin. And rattles out. The shoot a and, er and early on, Jim, it's been Nigel Hayes getting it done. Of course, first spinning baseline with the nice strong finish and showing that he can also step outside and shoot from downtown. Wisconsin up eight. Well, the Badgers were ranked as high as number seven in the country the first week of February. And then all of a sudden the bottom fell out. It really started with Northwestern winning on their floor, on Wisconsin's floor. They lost five out of six after that. <laughs> And a little get together and straighten out their attitude, so to speak. A little players only meeting. Yeah, and then just let's go have some fun. And uh, Greg's all for that, and they sort of turned it around. You mentioned how experienced they are. They're so experienced. These guys have played in these big games, been here at the Big Ten Conference Tournament, and got hot at the right time. Lumpkin will shoot one more. Brackets are back at the CBS Sports app to play with friends, compete for prizes, download it. Now to be ready when the field is announced tomorrow exclusively and first on CBS. Second one good. Illa Keenan's in the lineup now for the Badgers. And Northwestern has law on Kamek right now. He's a long rangy defender. And they're playing small now with Trice on the floor. This is a dynamite group now. Hainick took it over Law, and it stays down at this end of the floor. Now Wisconsin in no hurry. Hey, by the way, we're going to go to dinner tonight, and it reminds me of Wisconsin. They finally, uh, Bo Ryan ate at the hotel all the time. They decide, let's go to restaurants, but let's leave your phone in a bag. So every player had to put it in a bag. I suggest you two do the <laughs> yeah, same right. so we can just find out what kind of personality I got. I got a suggestion for you. Yeah, hot tea tonight. <laughs> Can you do it? <laughs> Only. <I'm gonna> get... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Hayes. No. It has I got to be another brewed. remedy for you. It has you. to be brewed, though. <laughs> another remedy. Uh, Onions. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. There's Law. Front of the end. Billy Keenan pulls it away. Boy, they are so tough to score on. Only guy in the last game that they played, McIntosh got 25. Nice so. Hayes taking on Skelly. Underneath. Stepped out, I think. Well, well, he might have hooked him. But got a foul call against Northwestern. And on the previous possession, Hayes is taking his time back and down. And loves to spin baseline. Great ball fake. Doesn't really play high or elevate at the rim, but uses his body and great touch inside. They, they all seem to be under control, don't they? Yes. And they don't try and do things that they're not capable of doing. Wisconsin. And the foul call was on Skelly. Here comes Fred Astaire with those footsteps. Three-point shot, no good by Hill. 
Koenig, though, will put it up. Oof. The all-time three-point shooter in that, Badger history. And that was tough. Northwestern did a pretty good job defensively. Forced to air ball for the second chance points. Koenig knocking it down for three. Skelly. And it's going to be a call going against Wisconsin. Never assume the shot is going in. And we talk about the little things. Hayes with the tremendous save to his fellow senior, Koenig, knocking it down. Where the advantage is to the offensive team, though, because you're looking to check out on the D. Tough to get vision. Foul was on Trice. Northwestern's hit only one out of his first nine. One out of ten now. It's going to stay at this end. Foul call. I think on Hap. It is on Hap. His first. Northwestern's had a couple around the rim. They got to convert those. Anything that simple, you don't get those opportunities. There's a great seal inside by Skelly. Just couldn't finish, as you said, Coach. Taphorn, senior, puts it up. That's his game. And buries it from three. Nathan Taphorn hitting the big shot. You may see him on the pro tour. He's supposed to be a great golfer, Joe. Oh, and he hangs around uh, some notable golfers, including Matthew Fitzpatrick, former Northwestern golfer, is now in the top 30 in the world. There's a three at the other end. They're good buddies. Nice rebound. He's going down to visit him at the Masters this year. Okay. Taphorn is. We might see him. <laughs> There's a chance. Oh, look at McIntosh. Does a great job in the lane. L love to have you there. Uh, I'm coming. I'll be there that Thursday. Beautiful. I guess I'll have to get there on my own. Uh, I'm... <laughs> oh, and Hap lost it out of bounds. 15-8, all of the Badger points from Koenig and Hayes. They say you can't teach experience. Well, that's at least what Raph says. <laughs> but early on, it's been Koenig knocking it down from downtown. And how about the clever play in that low post area? Nigel Hayes looks away, sets up. He knows where the trap is coming from. A little spin out. And to set that up is his ability to shoot the shot. Pretty tough. In or out. And it's amazing, you know these seniors upset about the performance against Northwestern at home early in the year, and they have come out and been very aggressive, setting the tone for the Badgers. Mm -hmm. That win by Northwestern really told America that they had arrived. And they won at Wisconsin February 7th. Now a road win against a top 10 ranked team. It had been years since, was, since uh, Northwestern had accomplished that. Now of the three of us, you've been at more events, no question. Was that one of the highlights, seriously, in Chicago? The atmosphere last week at Wells Ryan, top five atmospheres wow. I've ever been around any sport. Wow. I'd say it's one of the top five events. It uh -huh. wasn't a buzzer beater type right. thing. But when we came on the air last Sunday, I don't know if I've ever seen anything to match that. I think that's when my voice went. That's it. <laughs> and here's the, the Purple Rain, you know, the single season record for wins, most Big Ten wins on this floor in a semifinal game. First time ever in the Big Ten Conference semifinal contest. This is the 20th year of the conference tournament. Now, this is a great experience right now for Benson inside of Skelly Low. Whoops. Yeah, a little too much, too quick. Looked like Nigel Hayes pulled the chair a la Rick Mahorn. Who's in the back who's here? Who's sitting behind us here. Yeah. He pulled the chair on him right there. And that's the old trick. Yeah. Hey, he's looking at you now. He's smiling over here, Rick yeah, Mahorn. Hey, yeah, that's good. You don't want to upset him. him. <laughs> you don't want to upset him. <laughs> nice pass. Down the half. Oh, missed the short shot. Falls right back into his arms. You know, I recruited him. There he is. I recruited him, believe it or not. And he turned me down. It was an age bias thing. He said, I didn't want to play for an old guy like you. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. When he played for the Washington Bullets, he came and spoke at my camp when I was in grade school. Right. Then I played with him in Detroit years later. How about that? Was yep. he McNasty or Mick, Mick Filthy? I think both. Both? Well, he I think Lamp Beer was one. Oh, Lamp, yes. Yeah. Well, Johnny here, Most called him that, I think. And here they were the Beef Brothers, he and Jeff Rubin. Johnny's up there listening to my voice thinking it's him. <laughs> Hap gets the second free throw. That means he's only made now three of his last 17 attempts. 
over the last four and a half games. And I'll tell you what, Northwestern is kind of in a, in a good spot. They haven't played great, only down eight. Boy, that's like a end open, right? Yeah. Just pull up. You're right, it's been ugly here at the start, but now that basket trims it to six. Got to hang around if you're the Wildcats. The defense has been tough, I think. Nothing easy for the Badgers against this defense. No. Eric Benson's on the floor for Northwestern here. As Panic releases. And wide of the mark and out of bounds. And Scotty Lindsay, so talented, getting back to his rhythm and his form. Nice mid range game, pulling up over the smaller Koenig. His aggressiveness, attacking the basket, making plays, will give them a chance. Pritzel on the floor for Wisconsin, number one. McIntosh stops nice. the dribble, takes the shot. Nice double. He shut down half with that quick double up on him. Oh, I thought he should have gone left, didn't you? Trice, three-point shot. And it's off half. Tonight at 8.30 Eastern Bracket Week continues over on CBS Sports Network as one team punches a ticket to the big dance. Marshall takes on Middle Tennessee Conference USA Tournament Championship game only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Vito Brown back to the lineup. It seems like defensively Northwestern is settling down now. Mm -hmm. The line on their fundamentals, last few possessions, Wisconsin forced tough shots. Great defense by the Wildcats. Yeah, Wisconsin really handled that last play. They let that hit and follow. Now Law taking on Trice. Lays it in. That's a 9-1 to one stretch for the Wildcats. And at this end of the floor, Badgers have gone almost four minutes without a hoop. And they got to get half in the low box area, I think. Forced him to double. Somebody else is going to have to step up and make a play. They're doing a nice job camouflaging their doubles. Time to shoot. Joe Walter knows it, launches, and gets it. Go. That was big. Somebody outside of Koenig and Hayes stepping up. Mm -hmm. Show Walter, a little swing swing action. Off the double team. Lindsay oh. had a defender all over him, but it was a foul on the shot. Going against Pritzel. And Jim, you have to love the aggressiveness here. Law not settling, getting to the basket with the easy finish over Trice. And then a double team, nice swing, pass by Brown and Showalter knocks it in. But they really are frustrating and giving half different looks. And both of these teams, I think. The Don't you? I agree. And they really make it tough on catches. They're right there in your grill. Brown comes in, freshman from Seattle. He averaged about 33 points in high school. Oh, he was a huge score. Yeah. All-time Seattle prep score, in fact, at mm -hmm. Seattle's Lakeside High School. Is that one of your old hometowns? Yeah. Or, uh, I just, this, few, this, yeah. this one is, too. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel at home when I'm around you guys. Yeah. Likewise. You got any middle ground? Falls to the floor. Who touched it last? He did. Well, he's hurt. Well, wow, he's up. Well, you're going to get open looks on that double, though. You just got to make them. Northwestern is, you know, counting on you not converting. Oh, Nigel Hayes comes back on the floor after a brief break. He's got seven points and four rebounds. They do a nice job with the dribble handoff, don't they? Well, not that time, but generally speaking. Here's Brown. Slip to the floor, and a three-on-two break. Hayes finds the trailer. Showalter, already hit one. Got another. How about the patience of Hayes? A little slap back.
Two threes by Showalter, 62 seconds apart. Lindsay on the drop for two. And that's his move, reading the defense, putting the ball on the floor. A little floater push shot. You can see they missed him when he was sick. It he took him a while to get his legs back. He didn't play against Wisconsin. That's when mm -hmm. McIntosh played huge. Hayes, nice move. Beautiful. Up with the left hand. Under control, smooth. Well, you know you're not getting up big if Koenig is blocking your shot. <laughs> oh. Brown, Parton defending, got a hand on it, got a hand on the shot. Oh, nice hustle by Brown. This match, you have Parton inside yeah. on Koenig. And look at Hayes, though, they do a great job helping their partner. See, that's your NBA mentality, right? They size it up, take advantage. Without a doubt. Oh. Foul in the act of shooting. Wisconsin, early hot start, and leads it by nine. All right, there's the early numbers. Wisconsin's knocked down five threes in this game. You know, you're speaking of hometowns. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in the home area of the legend right here <laughs> at South Lakes. Let's go to this high school footage from Reston, Virginia. Oh, wow. Look at Grant Hill. Look at that. Oh, I was a sophomore that, in that game. <laughs> Look at this body. It's about a half hour out of D.C. <laughs> we thank Wendell Bird for sharing the footage of a young Grant. Wow. wow. Hey, yeah, there it is. I'm going to get you, Joe. And <laughs> hey, guess who's here? Look who's here. Oh, there you yeah, go. There's Janet mom. right there. <laughs> and, and my mother is not here to see me. She's here to see Chris Collins. You see she's that? wearing the, the hey. Northwestern colors. She's always right over your shoulder. You're right. Always looking after you. <laughs> that yeah. is true. It's a good thing. <laughs> I, I, had, I had asked him a while ago why he didn't play football. Watching that body, now I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was uh, leading into this. I, I, I came across a book, The Great Book of Washington, D.C., Sports Lists by Andy Poland and Lynn Shapiro. And as far as the all-time Northern Virginia high school hoopsters, you were, you were number one in that book. Uh, David Robinson, by the way, was number two. Dennis Scott, and there's an old Dennis. NCAA Final Four name, was number three. Uh, Dennis could shoot it in the Admiral. What a career he had. Oh, man. Good. Dennis Scott was one of my heroes as McIntosh gets back in the game. Went to Flint Hill, off to Georgia Tech. Right, right. Yeah, David yeah. Robinson. Michael Jackson played at Georgetown. Sure. The same was, high school. That was your buddy. In fact, people thought you were going to Georgetown because of him. I had to get away. My mother would have been too close. <laughs> <laughs> too demanding. I could tell just talking to her. There's Koenig. Another three right. this time. And saved over the pardon. McIntosh. He knows he's got to score against this team. It doesn't come easy. Tough match here. He wants to manufacture a post up. Nice hands. Hayes is never in a hurry, is he? He plays at a nice tempo. Gets what he wants every time. Just a little shade down there to help. He's got the size with Law. He is clever. For Law, his first. And Hayes is just a tough matchup for college guys, don't you think? Yeah, uses his strength so well. Puts the ball on the floor and never shies away from contact, Nigel Hayes. New episode Monday. If you're hungry for laughs, you're in for a treat. Superior Donuts, Monday 9, 8 Central only, CBS. So many of the parts to this Wisconsin team we've seen in the biggest spots in college basketball. Final Fours, championship game just a couple of years ago. I can remember Hap being in the uh, layup line 
He was uh, sitting out that year, and people were saying he's going to be the next great player here. Mm -hmm. Down in Indianapolis. Well, they bring him along nicely, don't they? They do. Sit out of red shirt year. Right now for Northwestern, only one assist on six made baskets. Too much one and one Need to trust their offense to give credit to Wisconsin's deep. Good job by half getting it out, saving it to Showalter. Never in a hurry. Look for a break and get plenty of time to run their action. Boy, half has not had many touches. They get a little grab underneath. Lindsay with the a little touch. Were you close to going to Georgetown, by the way? You know what? In my top three schools were Duke, North Carolina, and, and Georgetown. Hall? Oh, Georgetown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had you I, still been there? I love PJ, but that's it. <laughs> you don't want your ears burned off. Oh, huh? PJ Carlos about. Joe Walter fires up the three, and again an offensive rebound by the Badgers. Nice drive. Joe Walter driving in. And Hap kept everybody busy. Pretty tight. Chris Collins doesn't want to see any more of that. And he calls the timeout. Double-digit lead now for Wisconsin. And the Badgers lead it 27-17. The number two seed in this tournament. Again, so familiar with being in this position. In the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament for the fifth time in six years. Do you think for Northwestern, it's since it is their first, any effect on the way they started out this game? Uh, you know, I think they've been very. I just think it's the defense. Yeah, I don't agree. You? I agree. Man, Wisconsin is so tough, always in the right spot, wow. always helping, well coordinated. Wildcats shooting just 32 percent. Have not made a shot in over three minutes. Look at the help. Time shakes free. I'll tell you, that was great recovery by half. Sure was. Get Nothing. on the ball fake. Still was able to contest the shot by McIntosh. Nice lead pass. And it drops Zach. for half. And that was the first clean look that half has had today. And Showalter just led him in the right direction. Gorgeous delivery. Wild pass after. Not let this game get out of control here. Out to show Walter has eight points, two rebounds. Stays with Wisconsin. Well, one of these two, Commons or Guard, they will be coaching up their team on Sunday. The winner of this one to take on Michigan for the Big Ten title. Let's get it underway. Three, four, Skywalker beyond belief. March Madness. All the games, every shot, all the magic moments on CBS, TBS, TNT, True TV. It all begins with the selection show tomorrow at 5 30 eastern all the way to the final four championship game we're heading to phoenix heading west for a final four for the first time since 95. jerry palm of cbs sports and cbssports.com projects the wildcats on the eight line right now wake forest and vanderbilt they're on the bubble of uh, wake really has two very good players crawford and collins and how about vandy beating florida as well that's really helpful Travel call on half. And right there, Lumpkin did a fantastic drop, dropping off of the the, uh, mm -hmm. the passer and forcing Hap to pick up his dribble, and he had nowhere to go. And Sounds like us on the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's a shame. A little slippage. Yeah, that's Lindsay. happened in that area, Jim, a few times the last two days. Nice cross screen in the bag. Tracy, over to you. In the last two huddles, it's been the same message from Chris Collins. He says, fight. He said, they're out scrapping us. They're out hustling us. He said, we're doing dumb stuff. He said, 
do you want to win here? He's like, he said you have to will it to win it. He said we have to climb back, but not if you lay down. If you lay down, we are going home. I love, love him with that foul, but the psyche is intruded upon when you play against Wisconsin for some reason. They just slow you to their pace, they beat you up on their intricate sets on the offensive end. Without a doubt, but that's the Chris Collins I know as Hat knocks down a free throw. Chris Collins, a teammate of mine, the ultimate competitor, will fight to the end, has willed this program to relevancy and trying to get something out of his team here in the fourth into the first half. How about half hitting two straight free throws? 46%. Actually, yeah. three in a row going back to the last time he's at the line. Wow. And now the Panthers have their largest lead at 14. You might call it a happening. <laughs> and Trice, who just came back into the game, is called for that one. He's had two cheap ones, has he? Kind of thought that was good defense right there by Trice. Might have caught Lindsay on the arm. It's the second one against the freshman. Yeah, they're going to get him out. I like this kid, though. Uh, really moves his feet. And, uh, oh, boy. Man, maybe he had the arm underneath there. But, goodness, take a subway ride in. Be unscathed. <laughs> Pritzel back on the floor. You know, Grand High asked Pritzel before the game what happened to the hair. He had these flowing locks. Remember what he said? He said his mama didn't like it. But Bob didn't like it. <laughs> Were you a mama's boy? I, I was a mama's boy, and she didn't like my flat top back in the day either. <laughs> we got a lot of footage of that. <laughs> my my, my mother freshman didn't year. Like my gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No cross again. Well, they like Pritzel. They think he's going to be a player. There's Hayes. Look at Hap. Keep the possession going. You can't give them second possessions. This painful, nice passing catch. And a foul. Back to the line for Hap. And Raph, you talk about second chance points. This is 10 points for Wisconsin as Nigel Hayes getting double teamed and Hap not standing still, cutting to the basket. Great find and finish. Let's see if he can make it four in a row. You've got to delay your double so your top guy can rotate. You know what I mean? They buried yep. it too soon. Hap, yes. Four in a row. And again, the four games leading into this one, he had made two out of 15 from the line. <laughs> well, he's not choosing sides. I know that. We'll be shooting technical soon. <laughs> no one better at the moment. <laughs> Lindsay. And it's Skelly. Chased it down. Law. Great help defense. And it's they... blocked out of bounds by Wisconsin. Stays here. Well, they meet at the summit, don't they? You make a baseline move, they really counter. Coming up, AT&T at the half. A little more than 24 hours away from Selection Sunday. Greg Clark set. Have all the scores, highlights, the latest updates about uh, who's in, who's out. Coming up, AT&T at the half. He likes that floater. That's a hard shot right that there. Is. That angle. That's the first field goal for Northwestern in six minutes. And right now for Northwestern, you just want to execute down the stretch. Maybe cut the lead to 10 or under 10 going into halftime. Hayes. Boy, he was just set up early, huh? How deep he got in that yeah, post yeah. position. Oh, my God. That's, you're vulnerable. Well, one thing Northwestern shown the last couple of days here, they can put together a run. Three-point shot off the mark. Bodies tangled. The foul call is going against Parton. There's a reason, I think, that Hayes got free. What do you think? That strong shoulder. <laughs> and Skelly's a big kid. He's a... And the thing is, Hayes doesn't have great lift, but he just gives you that little bang there, creates some separation and distance, and nice touch inside. Embraces the physical play, typical Big Ten play, Nigel Hayes. You know, when they play the smaller lineup, he is tough, I think, up front. One and one. 
Are you giving him the announcer's jinx here? Oh, hey, we've covered this for long enough. I think we can't be blamed. <laughs> I mean, the odds are you've got some point this far, here. right? I think, he's go, I think he's going to make the, fir the front end. Why don't you go out there on a limb and say he's going to make both of them? Uh, how about dinner? How am I going to make both? Uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> That's five in a row. Wisconsin uh, crowd is going, they're going crazy. They're going crazy. I guess I won't be paying for dinner tonight. I got, I got dinner. <laughs> He's got those big mitts. Sometimes it's tough. It is tough. You work with the big guy, right? Uh, Shaquille. Shaquille, another guy had big hands. And just hard to get a feel on that basketball from the free throw line. I like guys with big wallets. <laughs> Skelly. Yeah, they're just really having their difficulties. And anything loose, yeah. they grab. And as I said earlier, they had that late game last night. Took a lot of energy to come back and beat Maryland, a very team, a very good team playing here in front of their home crowd. And you just wonder if they don't have the legs here today with that quick turnaround. Good point. Painting with a lot of experience in moments like this. With one to go. Puts it up. Half with the rebound. And a foul. I think Law thought there was a foul because he had the opportunity to rebound it. You think the buzzer threw him off? I, I think the buzzer yeah, threw him yeah, off yeah. there. He just sat there as if it was a, or maybe a shot clock violation. Now start a new streak right here. Look at the size of his hands, Jim. I mean, just amazing. And I, it's like a tennis ball. Look at those paws. It's amazing though for Hap inside. He has such great touch. He can handle the ball. Great passer. Great feel. He doesn't really shoot a lot of free throw. Excuse me, a lot of jump shots. But inside is pretty automatic. He's the only Division One player who leads his team in points, rebounds, assists, blocks, steals in conference play. You saw that no D is incredible. Wow. And a great. I think he's just so sound defensively. Compliments those numbers. See if Northwestern can finish the half on a high note and maintain it here with just under six. Now that's twice they tried to run that play, hit, follow, and great preparation. It's an old pistol play that Chris took from his dad, Doug Collins, to run that in Detroit. We were talking about that last week. McIntosh, Hayes is on him. Tough shot. <laughs> They are right there. Wildcats held to a season low 21 first half points. Badgers opened up the game with a 15-3 lead. And then they closed the half with a 22-9 stretch. So it's a 17-point advantage. And Tracy is with Coach Collins right now. Thanks a lot, Coach. A very difficult first half for you guys. What do you attribute the struggles to? Well, I think they're a little bit quicker to the ball. You know, they're out hustling us for some rebounds on the offensive end, the 50-50 balls. We have to try to find some energy. Right now, they look like the scrappier team, the hungrier team, and that's why they're winning. Is that the fatigue of playing these this many games and a late one last night? Yeah, I mean, it's a quick turnaround, but there's no excuses. You know, you're playing in the Big Ten semifinals. you got to find the adrenaline. you got to find the will. we got a lot of basketball to be played. we got to come out with a good start to the second half. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Jim? Hayes led the Badgers with 12. Hap added 10. Halftime here in Washington. Wisconsin 38, Northwestern 21. CBS Sports coverage of the Big Ten Tournament is sponsored by AT&T. Lexus, experience amazing. And by Napa, keep your ride running longer, stronger with Napa know-how. We're back here in our nation's capital. And look at what Wisconsin did to Northwestern. Held them to 26% from the field mm -hmm. as we take a look at the Taco Bell first half stats. Now, Northwestern has put together some runs in this tournament. 20 to 2 run last night against Maryland. And the night before that, 
against Rutgers, 31 to nothing, with the longest unanswered run, they say, in Big Ten history. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen against Wisconsin, but they need to come up with something here. How are they going to do it? Well, I think, obviously, they're not scoring the ball on the offensive end, but defensively, 14 points in the paint for Wisconsin. And right now, as you see, Nigel Hayes, a little buddy ball with his guy, Hap. Hayes and Hap, sounds like a law firm, Coach. I know our play-by-play -play partner wants a close game, but I can't blame him. But this defense has been superb. All the help, all the position. And right here, you think you got an easy one? Wow. Step through. Hap added this tough. All right, Tracy, what are you hearing at halftime? Well, Jim, you mentioned the run that Northwestern made on Maryland yesterday. Well, Greg Gard told his team about that run at halftime. He said anything can happen. There's a lot of basketball left to be played, but he was extremely pleased with their defense and also with the way that Hap was producing on the free throw line, Jim. How about that? I ran into some Wisconsin fans during the break. And they're all talking about half at the free throw line. Isn't that funny? Stepping up big time. Yeah, it six out of nine. It's not usually kid. something you'd be talking about. But given his recent history, it's good to see if you're a Badger fan. Okay, Northwestern. Let's see what they come out with here in the second half. You run your stuff on a breakdown, take advantage. Quick jack by Lumpkin. I don't know if that's what you wanted at the gate. You talk about with. Wisconsin coach Greg Bard talked at halftime. I don't anticipate a letdown happening with this Wisconsin team. Too experienced, as you said, Jim, in the mm. open, and they've been here before. They're going to just try to stay consistent and disciplined. That's what they do. Bounce pass to Koenig, and he puts up the three. Tapped out by half. Second chance points. That's been a problem here. Northwestern playing good initial defense, but giving this talented team multiple chances on each possession. Here's Hayes. Three-point shot. Soft. Oh, yeah, it is. Off the rim, off the glass, and down she goes for three more. And it's fitting. Hayes started the game off hot and doing the same here in the second half. He's got 15 to lead the Badgers. Six out of nine from the field. Show off the real good. Nice entry. There's Pardon. Working hard for it. Lays it in on the second chance. Now they need him inside. He started the game missing one, if you recall. His first two points of the game. When you're down big like this, 18 points to start the second half. It's just one possession at a time. You can't be overwhelmed by the, the score, but just play hard and give yourself a chance as the game progresses. And his last touch by Lumpkin. Four seconds left as you take a look. They're going to check to see if, is that a three? Yeah, he was behind the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From our angle, you couldn't tell. Shot clock is at four. Panic, it's past law. And that's a shot clock violation, which denies the Wildcats of breaking out of there. And going on a little run up the floor. And that was a little unfortunate because one of the things they did well in their first matchup was getting out and opportunistically running mm -hmm. the Wildcats. And right now they haven't had any fast break points. Give credit to Wisconsin. But I, I think they have to trust their offense. And as the shot clock gets down, McIntosh is going to have to step up and try to make plays for himself or his teammates. Law. And that was Koenig who made that shot difficult. Came crashing in at the last moment and influenced that one. And you can forget easy baskets when you play Wisconsin. I agree. I mean, they, they, they just shut the door in that area. Especially early in the shot clock. Maybe in that situation, Law, get into the paint, use your size and athleticism. Don't settle against this very good defense. Ooh, almost a turnover. Half oh, ball. His best move of the game. Wow. I see why he's first team all Big Ten. He not only makes free throws, <laughs> he's got great footwork. Second team all America, too. Here's Lindsay. Ooh, welcome. Good shot over Vito Brown. And that's a good sign for Northwestern. Lindsay can get going and get hot. 
And this team is resilient. They're not going to quit. They're going to fight to the end. Nice pass again. They send Hat back to the line for a couple. And this right here is, this is just great talent. A crossover spin move. Avoiding the double team and finishing on the baseline. Using those big mitts. And then on the other end, Scotty Lindsay finally hits a long jump shot. But wow, Hap just showing a lot today and making these free throws here. Easy game, easy game. Yeah, Seven yeah. out of ten. I like how he waits till the tournament to get going. <laughs> You're right. I think those big hands helped him on that spin dribble, too. He had to reach away from the body. Nice coverage on the back door by Hayes. Long it's, it's free, free throw line. Yeah. Take that extra dribble, get mm -hmm. into the paint. And see if they come with you yeah, or give you the opening. On this end, they got to get some stops, Northwestern. Thou shalt not take a bad shot. That's part of the market. They don't force the issue. Somebody got to have to help. Whip it around to Kaner. Got the shot they wanted. Big rebound. Vito. Vito. Loses it on the floor. McIntosh. Nifty ball handling there. Law again. No. And sometimes Law has a tendency to shoot the ball flat. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get a lot of arc on that, but that was a good shot right there for him. And great old. Wisconsin seals the deal with the rebound, though, Grant. They just don't give you a second chance. Nothing. Hayes, up big. Look at his patience. Just takes his time, surveys what's happening, uses that body. Mm. He'll be shooting a couple after the break. A cast of game changers out to change the game again. Get in on a new survivor. Wednesday, 8, 7 Central, only CBS. Well, the lead at halftime was 17, and that's what it remains after the first break of the second half. It's really tough to get back in a game against Wisconsin simply because they don't hurt themselves, and they value every possession defensively. Yeah. A lot of teams value it on the offensive end. But they are secure in their responsibilities. Hayes will shoot a couple. As we went to that break, Lumpkin... Sanjay Lumpkin charged with his fourth foul. And so Lumpkin will sit for a while. Nigel Hayes is uh, one of 10 finalists nationally for the Senior Class Award, which is a tremendous thing. I've attended that uh, function at the Final Four. They bring in 10 seniors who have shown not only great schoolwork, but leadership and contributions to their community and he's one of the 10 finalists so great job by Nigel Hayes that's pardon a little top side help a little bit late when you reach don't you think yeah well and that play Wisconsin double team but pardon was able to split the double team and get to that left-handed hook shot he's so efficient with that play creating space being aggressive Continuing to compete here. Foul was on Koenig, so a three-point play. He's just come out of his shoe. <laughs> so that move right there, get a little time, a little breather. <laughs> did Mahorn do that move as well? Step on your shoe. <laughs> he did everything else. I tell you, Rick Mahorn, when you I played against him when he was at the Nets. And I had my finger taped one game. Mm -hmm. And every time I ran by him, he hit my finger. <laughs> I, I, I used to tell the Nets, put the tape on the other hand, I'll hit that one. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Bill Keenan. A nice screen. This is that favorite play of America. Nice slip. There he is the inside. Boy, did they set that one up. Yeah, yeah they sure did. That's that slip play on the down screen. Wisconsin 
Almost a turnover there, but so much balance. 18 points in the paint, 18 from the three-point line, and right here, just a little great awareness. A slip play, some confusion by Northwestern. And able to get the easy basket. If you make a mistake defensively against mm -hmm. the Badgers, they will make you pay. Well, that's a tough shot in traffic, too. All the action coming from your right. McIntosh. Now a six. The basket the last time down the floor for the Badgers by Hilly Keenan. The first bench points of the game for Wisconsin. Patience really helps, helps them control the game. There's Skelly forcing the turnover. McIntosh. Three. No. Law almost soared through to take it. That would have been a momentum builder right yeah. there for Northwestern. That Down 12. If he could have converted. They really like the button hook into the post. Harden whistled for that. They got a foul on that, huh? I just thought it was a deflection. That'll bring Hap back in. Hill also. Vito Brown, all for Wisconsin. Three subs. Barrett Benson to the floor for Northwestern, and they keep matching up subs here. Taphorn also checks back in. And Benson is a freshman. Hasn't played tonight, but is a lively body, a big body. He's done well against Purdue with his size and athleticism. Now has a responsibility on Hap. Now, this is a great experience for him, too. All these extra games. Ooh. And I got away. One hand Brown. pass. Yep. See if Northwestern here can get something going. They force you to take time, Wisconsin. That's another difficulty. Late in the shot clock. Ooh. Look at the, how they are right there. Skelly with a three. Look at the check out. <laughs> Textbook. Box out by half. Wow. So back to back empty trips for the Wildcats with a couple of looks at threes. Vito Brown. Downtown. How about that? His He's first points of the game. Never made a three his first two years in Wisconsin. And then he made 38 last year. That's 35 threes this year. That's what you love about these young guys. Working and improving their games, making. There's Brown with the block. Yeah. Benson's tied up by Brown and Hill. And it'll belong to the Badgers off the arrow. And inside half. Knows the double team's coming in right there at the top of the key. One of the easiest three-point shots. Vito Brown knocks it in. He doesn't just do it on offense. Extra effort, great block on defense. Forcing a jump ball, Wisconsin basketball. Doing it all. Yeah, you know, if you don't do those things, you don't play. That's it. Ooh. Splits him and rolls off the front of the rim. <laughs> what a first quick. step. He looked quick. Up the catch. Yeah, that was tough. A little low for Taphorn mm -hmm. to pick it off the floor. Wisconsin is like, it's like football when you play against a team that runs all the time and they know how to manage the clock. The wishbone team kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know much about football though, so they well, know about why would you? <laughs> they know a little thing or two about running the football at Wisconsin, by the way, with yeah, all the running do. backs that have come out of there, including a guy named James White, who scored the winning touchdown on the Super Bowl this year. Another offensive rebound, extra effort, Vito Brown just doing the little things. You explain the football to your dad. I mean, he doesn't know much about <laughs> he, he it. He wouldn't <laughs> let me play. <laughs> you saw my body type, you would know why. Koenig. They tried to. You got to attack the basket here. Just like you said, McIntosh is not afraid to take the hit. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball continues after this message and a word from your local station. Let's take a look at the AT&T fast analysis. And you have to love half great entry pass position down low. 
finishing strong, moving without the basketball, converting his free throws, and then right here just showing his guard skills, crossover spin, saving the best for last. Ethan Happ putting his team on his back. 14 and 8 here with 11 minutes left. And Hayes has 16 and 9, so they're going to shortly, you have to think, both have double doubles. But just, Northwestern to inbound, down 18, cannot cut into that lead. And just so hard to get back in the game because they're always at home, challenging every shot just like that one. Nothing for free with this team. Not at all. Half banging. Good target. Great pass. Look at him work. Spins out. Three to shoot. They got him open. Show Walter. Nice split. Showing off. And that is tough. He's definitely tough. That just kills your defense, though. You have a great possession for 35 seconds. Right. Now a little nickel dimer there. Half. You have this little split. And so uh, I didn't have that in my game, but nice crossover. The senior with the floater. I think you might play. have done that a time or two. I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't have a good memory, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Wildcats haven't scored in four minutes. That shot challenged. And all Wisconsin underneath. Greg, Greg Bard, obviously a point of emphasis here. Do not let Ryan McIntosh get off. He had such a great game in Wisconsin. 25 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists. Lindsey was out. And tonight, just can't seem to get it going. McIntosh, 3 out of 11 from the field. Hayes pulled down that rebound, gives him a double-double. Brown puts it up. Got another one. Another, another three for Vito Brown. And that had no arc on that shot. Reminded <laughs> me of Terry Gannon. Who there used to play for NC State. State. Shot oh, a flat yeah. shot. A talented announcer. Yes, yeah. he is. Very much so. Outstanding. And a little giveaway here. What like, do you think? You like how I went way back on that. 1983-84, Terry Gannon. <laughs> a little arc on, little arc on it. Okay. You did that to hurt my feelings because they beat my Cougars in Houston. Oh, that's right. In the championship game in 83. And Terry had a big play in that game. He drew Clyde Drexler's fourth foul yes. on, I'm still going to say, 34 years later, a very uh, questionable call. Oh, there wow. weren't any fouls in that game, were there? Well, Clyde had four in the first half, and Gannon drew that fourth one on him. When Americans find themselves in danger abroad, this is the time to rescue them. Criminal Minds Beyond Borders, new episode Wednesday at 10, 9 Central. Isn't it amazing where you remember the losses more than the wins? If you want to get Jim excited, just bring up that game. Yeah, just bring up anything about the University of Houston. But April 4th, 1983, yeah, I'd let go of it. <laughs> hey, Jim, do you see the fingerprints here? Mo Ryan and Dick Bennett, oh, yeah. where they guard? Yes. And it's just a tradition that continues. Every point so hard earned when you go against them. Halfway through the second half, and the lead now at 21. Make it 24 as Trice knocks down a long one. He gives them just a different look. You know, I mean, it was a jump shot, but I just like he adds a little spice. He's quick, gets into the lane, can break away from the sets. Lumpkin. What defense here by Wisconsin. Good. Showalter Good. comes away oh. with it. Bounce pass Trice. Waits. Gives it up. To half. That was Wisconsin basketball right there in one highlight. The hard-earned defense. The patience at the other end. Selfless. Watch this by Trice. Great assist. CBS Sports coverage of the Big Ten Tournament is sponsored by Buick with seven expectation-shattering models. Century Link, your link to what's next. And by Bud Light, famous among friends.
And during that break, a rare turnover. It won't show up in the stat sheet, but watch this. Behind the coach. Uh oh! Well, that manager gets fired. <laughs> He's out of work. Re oh. His scholarship's oh. over. Oh, the whole team's look at all the out of Look at all the guys that weren't playing time. Oh, That's pretty great. <laughs> That, that is, is great. That is great. We'll see. You know they're way ahead when that takes place. Yeah, you talk about turnovers, Jim. Only six tonight for Wisconsin, and they've only had ten total fouls. That is bow ball right there Absolutely. at its best. Valuing the basketball. Getting shots. They don't give you extra possessions. Gotta work on those cups. The 26-point deficit ties the largest of the whole season for Northwestern. Ash in the game. Bounce pass is stolen by Hab. Now this is all about playing with some dignity, which they will, Northwestern. I think your point about fatigue and extra day, I mean, I don't think they're the kind of team that could do that. And as we talked about at the start, I mean, this is all very new for them. Consecutive games, three games in a row. Not done this before as Brown misses an open three. And is a really a learning opportunity for this group that Chris Collins will use as they go through the tournament. Oh, he'll have a very good uh, at this point to go in the next week's tournament. He'll he'll have everybody's attention. Not that he ever did lost it anyway, but to come off with this kind of performance into the NCAs, you know they'll bounce back. Uh, yeah, he'll handle it the proper way. Yeah. I would agree with you. Use it as a tool. There's that little swing where they slip bigs and small into the bo uh, box area. Hap back out with it. Five to shoot. Show Walter. Has that stolen by Law. Three on one. Here come the trailers. Lindsay. Show Walter will be running sprints after that play. <laughs> they don't make those kind of mistakes leading to runouts. What's amazing about Wisconsin, though, it doesn't matter what the game is, what time of the game, the score up 20, down 20, they're going to play their style of basketball no matter what. Trice. <laughs> How about that? He had to shoot it, just two on the shot clock. And you talk about how he gives Wisconsin another look. They really haven't had a point guard like him. No. Quick, get his own shot. He is the future backcourt for the Badgers. I can see you wrapping it with a haircut like that. <laughs> I wonder if you pay extra for that. Now, to Trice. Oh, another good pay nose at Yeah, Man, that pass just at the ankles of Hayes. And what's amazing is after that pass, Greg Bard yelling at Trice to value the basketball as Parton scores inside. It's all about teaching. And Greg's a keeper, though. Learned a lot of with Bo Ryan. He a lot of those uh, philosophies espoused by him. Greg Gard, a real keeper. Great decision at Wisconsin. 64-39. Final 6:48 to go here in Washington. We're on our way to a Wisconsin-Michigan championship matchup tomorrow. Pretty much from the start, fellas. 15 to three, right out of the box for the Badgers. And really have never let go of a dominating lead. 33% shooting there for the Wildcats. 10 threes have been made by the Badgers. And Jim, a telling stat there, three assists for the game mm. by Northwestern. And you got the leading assist King in the conference mm -hmm. in McIntosh. You know, That's five and a half a game. Yeah, you know, so. Almost six a game. Yeah. It just takes his time, Bill. Just going very must, deliberate. He must take a long time at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> But dining experience. Oh, yeah. man. You... 
I'm, I'm hungry. You're talking like that. Uh, no, he no. just really understands the pace of what the way the way they want to play. McIntosh. No shot. keep playing. No keep playing. Shaking his arm like he hit his hand. Funny ball. Yep. For Northwestern, even though you're down and may or may not be able to get back in this game, you want to maintain your good habits and at least have something to feel good about regardless of the outcome of this game tonight. Yeah, this is one. Would you look at the tape? I mean, you're, you're uh, getting I don't, ready for the NCAA tournament. I never like to look at the tape. Uh, you, know, you should never ask a player that. <laughs> Brown off the shot. You might want to look at the tape, though, of beating a Maryland team in this building last night, which exactly. was the equivalent of a, of a road game. Well, I'm just thinking being positive, you know, yeah. as you go into the tournament. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I played with... So, oh, <laughs> Beto Brown, another line drive shot. Without a doubt. Out of the double. Out of the double team, oh, spinning baseline. But to your point about tape, I've played for coaches that after a tough loss like this, you just come back and show highlight tapes of good plays throughout the season. You're talking about pro coaches, I'm sure. Without a doubt. <laughs> My, Mike looks like they beat Ethiopia by 60 in the Olympics, and he spends four hours on tape. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. You, you went by 60, you're going to... Have a long film session for sure. He'll find something. <laughs> they tell the story at the Olympics while watching tape. Jim Beheim fell asleep. <laughs> I think uh, oh, Chris man. Collins is the one that told me that story. Hey, when you win as many games as Coach Beheim, you can do that. Three-point shot by Jordan Hill. He'd rather sleep in Brooklyn, though, than Greensboro. <laughs> That's what I've heard. <laughs> Love Chris Collins still up coaching, demanding excellence from his team. Harden with a hook shot. Skelly on the floor, it's picked up. Billy Keenan. Billy Keenan is the one picked it up. Well, they really are just milking it. Nice and edge point. Under four break, bringing it home here in D.C. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup impact performance. It's been Nigel Hayes, 7-11, 7-4-11 from the field. Just efficient, nice pace. Gets what he wants every time, showing off his touch from downtown. And in the tournament, a double-double for Nigel Hayes. You need your veterans, you need your seniors, the ones who are experienced to set the tone. And Nigel Hayes did that all day and all night for the Wisconsin Badgers. Aaron Mesh has come in for the Badgers, number five. Pritz will see more action as well. And just like that, we have another break in the action. Tomorrow, a Putin critic who says he was poisoned not once but twice and survived. What a story. That one's one you'll hear on 60 Minutes tomorrow, only CBS. Now, was a, Chris was not a point guard, though. Wasn't he a shooting guard when he played with you? Oh, no doubt. Chris, Chris was a tremendous shooting guard. Uh, played two years together at Duke. Just a great competitor, a great friend, uh, a brother of mine, part of that Duke family. And then his father, Doug Collins, was my coach in Detroit. Some of my great years learned so much from Doug Collins and one of the great basketball minds, a tremendous broadcaster himself. Brian James, an assistant on the bench for Northwestern, was an assistant in Detroit. So I do have a personal connection to Northwestern, and although they've taken some lumps here tonight, uh, just a tremendous job is what Chris Collins has done with this program. Fritzel with the three-point shot. They think he's a player, by the way, and so is this kid, Benson. Yep. So let me ask you a question. He taught you how to play, Doug. Yes. 
Thought you had to announce. Do you send any money that way? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Are you representing Doug here? You know? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. I've learned a lot. He gave me a great NBA foundation. And as I got older and had one ankle, a lot of the things I learned from Doug Collins in Detroit, I was able to apply at the end of my career. So I always have a special place in my heart for Coach Collins. Well, you've been blessed with a lot of guys in your background as coaches, right? Coach Collins, Coach K. I got some good coaches over here. <laughs> well, you got the head coach on your left. It'll be interesting tomorrow, guys, Michigan and Wisconsin. How do you see that matchup, the way these two are playing right now? Well, you won't get any back cuts, I don't think, for Michigan. So I, I think we're going to see some perimeter shooting. Uh, which they're very good at Michigan. They met twice already this year. They split. Wisconsin won back in January by four, and then Michigan came back and won by six in mid-February. Both winning on their home court. Well, the venues in the Big Ten are special, as you guys well know. So Wisconsin emptying the bench. Charles Thomas the fourth comes in. T.J. Schlunt seeing action. Andy Van Vliet as well. Fade away, no, front of the rim. And put Van, Van Vliet in the stat sheet with a rebound with 148 to play. You know, speaking of announcers, Andy North, I'm sure, is here. He, He's right behind you. Oh, is he? Yeah, okay. about five rows up. Uh, you probably see He doesn't miss at all. Bit. Yeah, he's on the golf tour. Is faithful a fan as you'll find for the Badgers. Tapped up. Nope. And it was Thomas who almost got that one to go. Two U.S. Opens. Correct. Yes, that's correct. And I'm told he was a very good high school basketball player. And Brown scores at the other end. And you can see the talent that Brown has. Obviously played back up mm -hmm. to McIntosh, but he can really score. The challenge for him as he grows is learning how to score within the flow of the offense. With a nice young talent showing his skill. Mm -hmm. That's a two. Foot on the line. Got it to go. Hill. They're going to check to see if it's a two or three. And on that play right there. Would you tell Terry nobody really cares? No kidding. It was just two or three. <laughs> <laughs> but Charles Thomas. It's definitely a two. Stumbled over Brown and. That's what led to Hill being open. Now, uh, this is one of those you just move on if you're Chris, and I know we will get the guys back on campus, get set for next week, and be together as one tomorrow when you hear your name called for the first time in school history. Uh, that's right. It'll be a special show. day, huh? And it will be huge for them. Scully on the three. I think they'll be in that 8-9 game somewhere. I do. And that, that would put them, you know, if they won that first game against the likes of a Kansas, a North Carolina, a Villanova, or a Gonzaga. On the second day. On the second uh, game. Those 8-9 games are pretty good, aren't they? Oh, they are. And that's the ones I look at first when the brackets come out because I want to see the matchup the ones are going to face the second time out. Mm -hmm. Hill. That's pulled away by Jordan Nash. Final seconds, Ash launches, and this game is over. Mercifully. At 76-48. Badgers. They look like the team that rolled into February number seven in the country before suddenly things turned upside down and they lost five out of six. Looks like they got their mojo back. And they did. The maturity of this team went through a tough stretch, which can and will happen in the Big Ten regular season. But they regrouped and found their form and playing as good a basketball as I've seen from this team all season in Wisconsin. Uh, they a little get together, a little harmony, looking for some fun and uh, just going back to the Wisconsin way of playing. Wisconsin led wire to wire. They were up 17 at halftime. They kept the margin double digits for the final 24 minutes. And there's our matchup. The eight Michigan against the two Wisconsin. Two teams very familiar with 
Yeah, getting ten. into the Big Ten Conference Tournament and running deep. And, and getting into the NCAA Tournament. Yeah, that's right. Excuse With, me. Without a doubt. And both teams have senior leadership. They've been around. They've, they've played. Uh, and that's going to be paramount, not just for tomorrow, but as they try to advance in the NCAA Tournament. It's going to be in the 60s. It's going to be a nice matchup tomorrow. Should be. Yeah. Should be. Two even teams, I think. Yep. And the third game of the of the season between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Again, one and one so far on the season. Each winning on their home floor. All right, Tracy, over to you. Well, thanks a lot, Coach. A tremendous effort from start to finish. It was really your seniors that stepped up tonight. How important was that to have that veteran leadership in a situation like this? Well, it's been huge for us all year, specifically when the last two or three weeks we've been kind of scuffling along and, and losing games that doesn't don't sit too well in our locker room so it, their leadership is what helped us through this was one of those games the last time you faced Northwestern well credit Northwestern they've had a heck of a year Chris has done a heck of a job there and you know they made big time shots and, and McIntosh played really well um, we made some big shots tonight and our defense was really good well you're on to Michigan let me talk now to your senior leader over here Nigel, a double-double for you, and I know Coach talked about how the last time you faced Northwestern, you guys feel like you had to come out and prove something here tonight. Was that the case? Yeah, definitely. We uh, know when they played us in our building, they had a little more uh, sense of urgency. They knew that they needed that um, their resume win from the beginning, so they played a little harder than us, so they played with a little more fire. And we definitely know we owe them one today, so we wanted to you know, not only match that intensity, but try and surpass it. What did you show out here tonight, not only you, but this whole team, this effort from top to bottom that you guys can showcase against Michigan tomorrow? Uh, that we can play complete basketball. This whole year, um, most of the year, we've been playing defense only. And uh, it's been getting us by, but it's a lot easier, trust me, when uh, the ball goes in on the offensive side. So if we can continue to play aggressive like we are, I think that's what Coach has been telling us, to, to play aggressive, play free, play confident. So if we continue to do that, do well on defense, we'll be pretty good. Wish you the best of luck. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Jim? Well, that defense held Northwestern to 34% from the field and their lowest point total of the year. Wisconsin wins at 76-48 for Bill Raftery, Grant Hill, Tracy Wilson, Mark Wolf, Bob Fishman, all the crew. Jim Nance saying so long from Washington, D.C. Coming up next, the Mountain West Championship between Colorado State and Nevada. But first, we'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York with the road to the Final Four right after these messages. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.